Hey guys, brief lesson on load paths. So where I frame and live in the Pacific Northwest, we're in a high seismic uh, zone, seismic zone D2. What that means is that we're very likely to have an earthquake. More and more, we're putting hardware into houses, and one of the things that we do a lot of is strapping framing members together. So let's talk about load paths. I'll show you this here in just a second. Basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to tie elements of the building together. So for example, your roof is always going to see a load. As one engineer said, that load, one way or another, is going to hit the ground. It's either going to travel through the rafters or trusses down through the exterior walls foundation into the ground, or the building's going to collapse. <laughs> so obviously we want to prevent that. In high winds and earthquakes, we want to be able to tie all these elements, walls, roofs, floors, together. Now one of the ways that we often do that is through the use of straps. So typically for us, we're called out either a specific length of strap, or it's called out coil strap with the number of nails, the nail size, and the nail diameter. Simpson Strong Tie recently came out with a coil strap that you can cut to length, but what makes this especially cool, this is the CSHP18, so it's an 18 gauge strap, is as you can see here, it's designed. There's a side that faces the, uh, the lumber, and there's a side that faces your nail gun. And what you basically do is you press the tip of your nail gun right into that hole and you shoot a standard framing nailer, nailer, standard framing nail. So for us, we typically use a three inch, that's the length, times 0.131 inch, that's the diameter, nail. The benefit of that is that that thin of a nail doesn't split out, especially dug fur that we use. The other benefit to this strap is that in the Simpson catalog, they have the code table specifically listed for that nail. Then they have their strap selector so that the designer or engineer can tell you exactly how long of a strap you need and how many nails you need. So what I've asked our engineer to do is specify this whenever possible so that I don't have a bunch of different straps laying around. I don't have to order a bunch of straps and I don't have to order and use any special nails. I can use everything that's here and I can use and I can use the coils. Just a pair of snips, just a pair of snips, and I can get the length that I need. So let me show you what I mean by load path in this particular house. Okay, so what you can see behind me is I have an LVL that is supporting another LVL that supports a wall that supports the ridge. So the roof above me, that ridge load ultimately gets transferred to this LVL, which then gets transferred to this LVL. That load then goes to the columns, which are supported by framing members in the floor, which ultimately land on columns that are um, supported by big pier pads with rebar in them. So what we've done with the strap is we've tied all those elements together. Each of those was a different element, and what we're trying to do is make sure that that load path, in this case the gravity loads from the roof, if you poured water on a roof, think about how it transfers down to the ground. In this case, that load is going to follow each of those structural members. So that big 5.5 by 18 LVL spans 22 foot. Dead center on that is the ridge load. Then that end there lands right on an LVL that lands on a column that goes directly down to the big pier pad in the dirt. But now I have a balloon framed wall on this side because this is a two-story cathedral uh, living room. And so now, going front to back on the house, that LVL needs to transfer to the shear walls in the front and the shear walls here on the side. So you can see we frame them just like normal headers. Then according to the engineering, we have four by six blocks in the wall that on the opposite side gets nailed with the sheeting. Then that strap has been sized and the number of nails are sized so that this shear wall connects to that beam which does the exact same thing on the front. Then we've also connected it vertically to the column and then what you can't see in this particular case is that the column that lands right below these two LVLs on the opposite side, the upper wall is strapped to the LVL, strapped to the lower LVL, strapped to the column, the column goes to the ground where it gets a piece of hardware so that it doesn't move in the case of an earthquake. All of that was made much simpler by using the coil strap 
and just, just like that, shoot standard framing nails with a standard framing nailer. The only special tool that you need, the only special tool that you need, a pair of snips. I hope you find this helpful. I've got an especially long strap here. I'm gonna use the Makita high pressure coil nailer with this LVL. So the, one of the things I wanna point out is there's a correct way and an incorrect way. This is the correct way. It says this side up. And that's, if you looked really close, you could see that it kind of depresses this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roughly center this strap and I'm gonna center it on the blocking. I like to start from the middle and work out. And then my hand is well away from it. Go nice and slow. Now I can switch hands. Right away you see a major benefit. The fact that I'm using just a standard framing nail, it's low profile at 18 gauge. Now, I really probably don't need this much, but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. See how it wants to curl back? What you can do is skip ahead. Just don't put a bubble in your strap. Okay, so what I wanna show, hopefully you can see that, is the tip of the gun just centered right over that hole. And that's it.